In 2001, a Mauritanian government survey of 68,000 women found one in five between the ages of 15 and 49 had been subjected to gavage or force feeding. And yet there are those who insist the practice has now ended. When it comes to uh, stuffing girls against their will, making them, forcing them to eat beyond their need, uh, that's something that, uh, that is not accepted anymore. But Sunia is about to discover otherwise. She's reached her destination, a remote village four hours' drive from the Mauritanian capital, Nuakchot. This is the home of Majuba and Noha, just seven years old, but their smiles conceal a tragic truth. For they are being forced to undergo gavage, and their relatives seem completely unashamed. <laughs> We force feed the girls. We take a little thin girl and we give her milk until she gets fat. Under a corrugated iron roof fenced in by wire mesh, Majuba and Noha are eating a high calorie breakfast of couscous and liters of cow's milk. The obesity speeds up puberty and rapidly transforms the girl's body. She starts her period earlier than normal because of the fattening process. That's our aim. And Noha's father is also content to see his daughter being force-fed. Having a fat wife means that you're being generous to her, treating her well. You're giving her everything you have so the other man will say good things about you. When asked about their ordeal, Majuba and Noha have only one response. On and on it goes, seemingly without end. More couscous, followed by more milk, followed by more couscous. And the girls seem powerless to refuse. Noha's grandmother reaches for a pair of bamboo tongs as Majuba vomits. I was traumatized by Mahjuba's plight. She was so sick, so weak and vomiting. This little girl is just starting to be force-fed. She's only seven. The other girls are more used to it. It shocks me a lot as a mother and as a campaigner for human rights. She demonstrates how the tongs were once used to ensure gavage victims were compliant. She claims such abuse is no longer practiced, but the fact the tools remain so close to hand seems suspicious. Noha's arm hurts because of the pinching and squeezing, but her mother refused to roll up her daughter's sleeves and reveal her injuries because she fears being accused of child abuse. She realizes the harm she's causing to Noha, but still she continues. I force them. When they feel sick, I pinch them to prevent them from vomiting. I threaten and sometimes beat them. <laughs> Noha runs many times to the toilet to vomit because she can't do it in front of her mother. You saw her mother pinching her to distract her from throwing up. Noha's mother told me Noha vomits out of sight so she can return to drink more milk. But her mother is happy with that because they say the more a girl vomits, the more her stomach widens and she can drink large amounts of milk. In the stifling heat, Majuba looks listless and exhausted. But the bowl is effectively bottomless. It will be refilled the moment it's empty. The girls are reaching breaking point. The meal had begun with smiles, but now only tears. Family and friends all around, but seemingly no one to turn to.
I don't care if she's upset. This won't hurt her. It's good for her. When I was force fed as a child, I cried too and vomited. I didn't like the gavage either. But as I got older, I started doing it to myself, and then I liked it. And when I was their age, I wept and I ran away to vomit, just like they do now. Majuba is forced to drink yet more milk. Noha may have already been sick during her frequent trips to the outhouse, but that doesn't stop her mother commanding her to finish the bowl. <laughs> Noha's relief is evident, and a brief respite from the pressure to gorge permits a smile. But regardless of time-honoured traditions, both girls are unwitting victims of child abuse. Force feeding is a practice of violence against children. It should never be accepted, this type of practice, that will give a girl heart problems leading to an early death. The immediate effect of gavage on the girl is the suffering. She's a battered girl. It's catastrophic. She'll always be depressed in her life and subjugated. But Noha's mother sounds far from subjugated as she expresses a wish for Noha to grow up as a normal Mauritanian woman. Mauritanian men like women to be pleasing to their eyes and to their hands. I want the girls to be fat and big so they can get married fast and have children. But such a happy ending is by no means guaranteed. In the years to come, it could be Majuba or Noha on this operating table. The patient is having her gallbladder removed, a common procedure in Mauritania. Hundreds of obese women undergo this surgery every year, and this is why the gallbladder choked with cubes of cholesterol. This is a fat. All this is a fat. In the cardiology ward, Amy Sai is up to receiving visitors, including her baby girl. But although she admits to wanting to shed some weight, she still prefers to be fat than thin. I think all Mauritanians love women like me because I'm big. But is ill health and untimely death the price worth paying? The government thinks Mauritanians are getting the message. The gavage in the cities is starting to disappear because people are conscious now of the health implications. But in the countryside where people are less educated, gavage continues. But because parents prefer their daughters to go to school these days, they don't want to distract them from their studying. So gavage is decreasing, actually. Force feeding is a part of the cultural legacy, the heritage of Mauritania. It was born in the wide expanses of desert, in the open tents. But it's not easy to impose a new way of life on people living in rural areas and to eradicate their traditions. It's early evening at the sports stadium in Nouakchott. It mightn't be fashionable or culturally condoned, but these women are trying to lose weight. They don't appreciate very well the, the women which are here to make sports. Because me, for example, I can give you an example. When I was walking here, someone told me, just an example between others, told me, why are you trying to be so thin? It's not a necessary thing. <laughs> it's not, it will not be beautiful on you. Me, I don't want to be fat, just want to be in the middle. I don't like to be the very, thin, very thin, but not, uh, not, so, not to be so fat. To be in the best thing is middle. <laughs> my idea or my opinion, I like this woman, thin woman, and I like the woman to make uh, sport. I think the, the young people, they like uh, the thin uh, now, the thin uh, woman. In the Mauritanian capital, women are literally exercising their free will to decide for themselves the right balance between beauty and health. But across this sprawling country, in far-off towns and villages, 
Mauritania is deeply rooted in its culture and traditions. And girls like Majuba and Noha remain trapped in a tragic fate.